going to go is to glossary. Just highlighting a couple key terms, because I know we hear them a lot, and it's like, I have no idea what that means, or else I'm just kind of inferring that it means this and that. So a hashtag, we've gotten a lot of questions from people on, like, what exactly is a hashtag? I kind of think of it of, like, a way of categorizing your tweet. So, or like your post. So like in the world of X, like how would you label or what topic is your post related to? For example, someone does hashtag dogs, they're basically categorizing that their post is like about dogs. And if someone is searching, what are all the posts that exist in the X world that have to do about dogs? Yours will pop up. It may not be the first post that people see, but somewhere in the thousands, because dogs are a popular thing that people post about, your post will appear there as well. So the more hashtags you have, in a post, the more the more easily it's going to pop up into people's feeds or the more easier it's going to be defined. The second key one I would say is using the, the, the app time or making a mention. Whenever you mention someone in your tweet, which is like doing the app sign and doing their handle, you're basically they're going to get a notification that you're talking about them, but it's a way to get their attention to your post. So I would like to think about it, like if you're like in a large event, yes, you can try sh shouting out someone's name, but like using a megaphone will have like a far better impact or you're more likely to reach the person using the megaphone versus using your regular voice. So using the mention, using the app sign is just making sure that they'll get notified that Lindsay just posted something and Sandra, she wants you to see it. And then you'll get a notification and she's more likely to see your, see your post and retweet it and like it or do whatever it is that you want to, you want her to do with it. Are there any other, those are really the biggest one that I have, saw that there was some interest in like knowing more about them, but what, are there any other terms that you've heard that you were like, why, what does that really mean? I don't think so, but Not really. I have like a running list in my phone of ones that like I've come across that people are using for TPF. Mm -hmm. Do we have a TPF glossary that almost shows like all the different initiatives with the different hashtags or like links that we, they like us to use. So it's common. Hmm, good point. Yes, I know Stacy Sternberg has that, and I can get a copy of that. Because, yeah, it's on the TPF website, like each initiative. Like, if I go to DA4A, for example, like it's, but it's not ideally ideal to click on all of them to find what their hashtag is. Like, this is a hashtag for DA4A. But I know Stacy Sternberg does have a one pager, and so I'll get with her to see if she can share that so I can share that resource. That'd be great. Yeah, that'd be awesome because I can just save it to my phone and then copy and paste every time we tweet. So at least it's consistent. Nope. And I, I'm grateful. Lindsay gave me her, her list <laughs> uh, that I saved on my phone and it's been helpful. So thank you, Lindsay. No, we can do that. That is awesome. And someone was also asking one time, like, why do we retweet or repost? It's just, if Lindsay posts something, if Lindsay, if I'm following Lindsay, but Lindsay's not following Sandra and Eileen, if Lindsay posts something amazing, like Eileen and Sandra are not going to see it unless randomly by chance, it, the algorithms decide to show it on, on their feed. But if Lindsay posts something and I'm following Eileen and Sandra, if I retweet it, then it's going to pop up on Eileen and Sandra's post because they're following me and I'm following them. So once again, it was just like amplifying the post so that more people can see it besides just the people you follow. Like a multiplier effect. Now going into the actual X website, which there's a lot of things being posted about Remake, which I think is very awesome. So just going over the basics, when <laughs> Whenever there are posts being posted that you have not yet seen yet, you're going to get this little column row thing that tells you how many posts have been published since you were last on this website, which for me is 175. If you do not want to see them, then do not click on the show. But if you do, it's going to bring you back up to speed so you can be caught up on all the things you missed within the last 10 minutes. So we know that whenever we're looking at the post, you have the person's name, but then you also have their handle, which it doesn't always have to be the same. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. And then you'll be told the date that they published the post, but also if you click on it, it'll give you more detail, such as the exact time. Once again, talking about hashtags, 
actually doesn't have any hashtags, but she does have a lot of different mentions. So all of these different organizations and people are going to get a notification that Ashley Kuhn was talking about them in hopes that they will like what she said and retweet it so that their followers can see what Ashley has to say about subculture and make living days. You can quote, or at least, I mean, you can reply something to someone's post. I... I mean, there are some posts, it's not really, yeah, you can be like, oh my God, that's so amazing. But some posts are more likely to generate replies than others. Like if it's like a question or it's something thought provoking, but a lot of times people just stick to retweeting, liking. Something that Stacey Sternberg has shared with me now that, you know, Twitter is now X, like analytics has become like, you have to kind of like upgrade to X pro to get to see like some really in-depth analytics. So now the extent of the analytics that you can see for free is really this, how many views that you got. That's really the extent of the analytics that you can get for free, which, I mean, unless you're really like a Stacey Sternberg type person, this is like enough for the average person. If you want to like the details of like the time, what's popular or not, and unless you really want that level of information, I don't think this is worth paying for to get it. You can also bookmark posts because sometimes there are like some really cool stuff you see on X or like some really an event is coming up or information and you're like, I really want to save that for later so I can refer to it. You can actually do bookmarks where you can save it and it'll go into your bookmark category. For example, if I bookmark this post by Ashley and then I go to bookmarks, now she is here. So easily accessible. I know something that I saw on Twitter because I really do like reading. I, I don't know this person, but I just saw 52 books to read in 2023. And I'm like, when I have time, I, I would actually like to see what those books are. And I don't want to lose it in the timeline of things. So I just added it to my bookmark and now it will forever be there for me to look at when I finally have a moment to look at it, which is not today. If you want to see things about like yourself or how you're engaging with X, if you click on your picture, You'll get to see all the posts that you have liked or retweeted or re replied to. Like This is a quick and easy way to see how you're engaging with Twitter. So these are the things that I've reposted. These are the things that I've replied to. Keeping in mind that it's, keep, it's, keeping, it's counting you retweeting as a reply, which I find very interesting. If you want to find things that you've liked and if you want to see the media that you've uploaded into your posts, it will be here. So at one point I posted something that had these images in it. So this is kind of like my post image library of stuff. Any questions people may have so far? Hearing none, home, this is your X feed. Explore what's going on in, in the X world. You can see it by different topics, trending, news, sports, or you can, this is what I was talking about with the hashtag thing. If you're looking for something specific, oh yeah, let's do solar eclipse because that's what's on people's minds and people are tweeting, tweeting about it. So by using the hashtag solar eclipse, I can see everything that people are posted posting related to this topic. Once again, think of it of like a, a, a folder and a file cabinet. Notifications, once again, you get updates when people mention your name or when people are posting stuff that are on your feed. Well, this is the mentions category when people mention you. So these are the tweets that people have tweeted or posted that they've mentioned my name in it. And these are just notifications of the people who I follow that they posted something new. Messages. So this is essentially what's referred to as people's DMs. I don't really know how often like PPFers use their XDMs, but you can actually, but you, I'll start a new message, but you can actually start a message on X with different people on there. It could be like a PDF or it can be something. I don't necessarily know why you would, especially since I have basically everyone's phone numbers here and email addresses, but you can do that. You can have messages on X. List. I like to say to think of list as like subscribing to like a newspaper, like you're subscribing to like a content or to a topic. For example, if I subscribe or if I add Florida news and info to my list, I'm going to continuously get 
information related to Florida news and info. So I'm kind of like subscribing to this topic, ongoing topic on X. Bookmarks we've talked about, my saved posts of things I want to come back to at one point in time. Profile, if you want to edit stuff during your profile, but I skip communities. Um, I know I think Facebook, and I don't have any communities, but you can look for them. I think Facebook has like Facebook groups. This reminds me of like X's version of like a Facebook group where there's different communities related to different topics, different goals, and you can join them and interact with the people who are within those groups. So once again, just giving people insight into the different things, into some of like the basics of what's happening with the X world. But when it comes to actually making the post, one thing that people may not know that I didn't know is that you can schedule tweets. I always thought like you had to use something like a Hootsuite to do that, but you really don't. And it's really simple. I may have to remind myself how to do it. Okay, there it is. So right here, this is, I'm guessing, I don't know, to me, it kind of looks like a calendar, but this little symbol is like the scheduling symbol. And if you click on it, like that's how you get to decide. That's how you get to determine when you schedule your tweets. And then I'm going to do like April 16th. I'm going to do at 9.48 a.m. Then I'm going to click confirm. And now I can tell it's going to be scheduled. And then so I that was, feature isn't on like the app, right? Because I feel like that, I use the app that, way more than I use. I actually today is the first time I've ever logged on to like the actual web page, like on a computer. That's interesting. When you go to do it, and what about I? What about you, Eileen and Sandra? Are you guys pretty predominantly tweeting, posting from your app? Everything I do from the app, yeah. I've done both, but um, primarily on the app. Interesting. Yeah. So when you guys go to do a post, do you see that symbol there? I'm looking right now. I don't see it now. I've actually never used the app. That's so funny. I I've know. Never I've, <laughs> I've never um, used the website. <laughs> no, I, I don't see it on the app. Interesting. So it says that's X Pro. Interesting. So they might now that might be an X Pro feature, but I'm gonna double check with Stacey Sternberg and she will educate me on if you can do it or where where it might be if you do want to schedule your post. I mean, I do see it like on the website, but not on the app. Yeah, that's very interesting. Schedule post on X app. One thing I never noticed on the um on the app is that you can do a voice recording. Not that I would. <laughs> but it's interesting that one can do that i didn't know that you could do that as well maybe i hmm, i need to explore the app before my next class so i can be up to date i was like i don't have room on my phone to be downloading <laughs> another app so i, I just, think i think the majority of ppfers use the app and i versus... think i just so i just like bookmark the web page on my phone so i just click on my bookmark and it'll Ooh. open but then, so when you have to like upload, a, in my mind, every picture that I want to post, I then have to like email to myself to save to my computer to then like upload. No, you don't. So I don't know. Is everyone here? Does everyone here have an iPhone or not? Yeah. Yes. That makes things easier. So <laughs> whenever there's like a web, for example, um, this won't necessarily be a lie like if you go to twitter.com like if you go to safari if you go to chrome wherever you're going if you go to twitter.com right now it might ask you to log in you don't really, you don't necessarily need, have to log in but just really go to the twitter page on your phone and once you're there you know the icon for the share symbol I want you to go ahead and click on the share icon symbol. Like the X with the arrow pointing up? Yep. Yep. Scroll down and then where it says, and you should, you should see add to home screen.
You can rename it, but right now we're just going to leave it at, as X and then click on add on the upper right hand corner. And now you should see the little X icon on your like iPhone home screen. And when you click on it, it's going to look exactly like the app one. But if you can figure out which one is the, like the link, if you click on it, it'll bring you to the web version of, of X. And if you were logged in, it would, it would be like the same experience as if, as if you were on the app. I never knew you could do that. Yeah, and it's not taking up storage space. That's really what I like about it. I can't give up my precious storage space. And for me, when I do it that way, because I'm just putting a link to Twitter onto my home screen, and that's when I have the ability to still schedule my posts versus I'm guessing that's not a feature on the app, which is really crazy. So that would be very helpful to have. That's so interesting. So you can do that for any website. Any website that you're really like, yeah, it would be nice to have the app, but I kind of don't want to have the app, you can just add like a direct link from the website to your home screen. So it's like a quick and e easy way to access it. Sandra, did that make sense for you as well? No, I, I must have missed a step. Do you okay. mind just going over one more no, time? Of course. So I went to, if you can go to Safari or Chrome, whatever you use, you can go to okay. twitter.com. Right. Once you're there, on like the bottom of your screen, yes, you should see the share symbol, which for me is like a box with like an up arrow. And I can stop sharing to see if I can do your settings, take off the word. So if I'm on Twitter, the app, sorry, uh, no, not, not the, the app. app. You're going to go to Safari. Yeah, I went to Safari and I'm looking for that thing. Sorry about that. A little yeah. slow. Okay, okay. So cancel on that because I wanted to take. Well, when I did it the first time, and I clicked on like Twitter or X, whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah, it sent me to the app directly. So oh, yeah, we do it again. And click like on me. something else. That's okay. why I was like a little. Uh, so Twitter.com. dot mm -hmm. I'm on Safari now instead uh -huh. of. Chrome. Okay. And now it says happening now, join to get, and I'm, it says sign up. So you can just stop there later on you later on. If you did choose to sign in Lindsay or Eileen, you would have to make sure you add it to your home screen with it, with it, you already signed in. Now we're just doing to like the homepage, but you don't want to have to sign in every time. So you would delete the old link, sign in, and then add that signed in version to your home screen. But for you, Sandra, for where you're at this symbol, it's yes. what you need to look for and click yeah, on the share. Yeah, you can click on the share. Yes. And Got it. scroll all the way down. Scroll all the way down. Look for add to home screen. Yes. And then we're not, you can rename it, but we're not going to do it for this purpose. We're going to click on add on the upper right hand okay. corner. Perfect. And now the X symbol will appear somewhere within your IPhone. Yeah, I already had. So that's just a symbol versus an app because that's I have the app that has the X symbol and it looks exactly. like it it's the app. Exactly. But now, but now when you click the one that you just saved on your phone, it'll take yeah. you to the web browser one. So you could see oh. the web browser version and like schedule posts and things. And she's oh. saying you could do that for any website. Save it. Yeah. On more access. There's more access things that you can access through the web version yeah, and, it, and, it does, and it doesn't take any of your phone storage oh, that's so look cool at that. well you know what else i learned if you go to the app and you hit like you're going to post something and you go to the purple one that has like it has like a plus sign it almost looks like it's a uh, deep diver um purple uh, right next to the camera if you hit that icon it takes you to this thing that says, uh, let's get you set up and you can get the mic access. Okay, but um, there was a reason I said, oh, to the right of it. So if you cr get out of that, you just like hit on any other space. It says, create your space. What do you want to talk about? And there you can schedule things. Oh, 
but it's like schedule your space. So I'm not quite sure what that means, but it does give you like a, what is an X? Create your space. Yeah. And it says, what do you want to talk about? And then it, you can record or enable video and there you can actually schedule. So the space, well. the space is for audio conversations. Mm. So it's kind of almost like, I don't know if anyone here uses WhatsApp. I know WhatsApp is pretty big on like the audio conversation. It's almost like a space for you to just have audio conversations with people. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. So I can schedule my time to have an audio conversation. <laughs> yes, I think that's very interesting that there's at least not an easy way from what we're to do to so schedule posts on the app. That's kind of crazy to me. It might be a pro feature, but I will ask Stacey Sternberg about that. But by just adding the link, the quick link to my home screen, if I were signed in, I would have like all the access to X that I have as if I was logged into my computer. And from there, like I could schedule posts exactly like how I showed you when I was sharing my screen. That was very interesting. And now I need to download the X app to investigate further. Mm -hmm. No, you don't. You don't need more to take <laughs> storage. <laughs> just, just so I can have a frame of reference of what people are seeing what they're talking about, but then I'll delete it. But yeah, I have a little, I have too many apps on my phone that I already need to delete. Anyway, but that is a quick and helpful tip to just keep in mind. You can do that with any website. It can be baking, it can be food, it can be, because everyone wants you to have an app now. And some things, yes, they merit an app, but some things are like, I don't know if you're worth my phone place. That's so interesting. <laughs> Learning something new every day. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing that I wanted to share before we go to practice. I don't, now I don't even know if this is a feature on the app, but you can also, yeah, this is how you add an image. And going back to what you said, Lindsay, using like the link on your screen, if I click on media, it'll show me like the pictures I have on my phone. So you no, know, you don't even have to go to your email or anything. It's going to ask you to pick a picture from your gallery. You can do GIFs, GIFs, but you can also do polls. And anyone, thankfully, you don't need to have a pro to do a poll. Kind I of do that on the app. Yeah, you can. Okay, that's you can. Right. Yeah, the poll. You, so can. you can. You can do a poll, but you can't schedule a post. Yeah, interesting mm -hmm. priorities, people. And, priorities. Yeah, <laughs> and this is similar to kind of what I what we were. Everyone here has done like the Zoom two poll, so this is really similar to what I have shown everyone during class. Like you pick your, like you would put the question and the post. You would pick your options. And then you would decide how long you want your poll to be answered for. And at the end of it, you'll get the result of what people, if people participate, what are the what are the poll? What what does the poll say? People's favorite color are. Once again, not saying you have to use this, but it's just know that it's an engagement tool to incite engagement because it's cool if people read your post like it retweet it but now this is a way for them to interact with it so I think this is good but depending on if it fits this could be something cool to do for like remake learning day which is already an interactive festival so finding ways for people to engage and participate and attend remake learning day events and know that you can only do a poll like if you do a poll, you can't do an image. If you do an image, you can't do a poll because that like the, the poll is taking up where the image would be. And as like a quick good to know, I am going to, yeah, can I find the gap flyer? I don't know. But I'm going to download the gap flyer because I want to show people something. This is a gap flyer, which everyone is familiar with, but I want to show you that on the second page, you should see that like this QR code is a live link. So I, I click on it, it'll bring me to the intake form. Versus here, you can only upload images. You can't upload PDFs. So if I turn, the only way I could share this gap flyer is by turning it into a image file, which is not that hard. But once I do, I want to show you what happens. So this will no longer become a link. Whenever you turn a PDF into an image, like the link no longer becomes active. 
people can still scan it and it'll work. But if it was like something that says click here, like if like there's no way for people to click to go to the link that you want. So you would have to put the link directly in the post itself. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even the image looks just like weird. Yeah. For it the does. QR code. It does a little bit. But the QR codes are a great way of bypassing that on really any social media platform. Or just if you know you're going to be converting things from like an image to a PDF, it's good to have the QR code because the QR code is a little bit more universal. So Stacy has created it where the where the QR code is a link itself. But if I'm posting on social media, people can't click on the link. They can just scan the QR code and they'll still go where they need to go. So just kind of like a tech tip to keep in mind that links die once they become images and you would need like you need like a QR code to, buy, to bypass it. Sorry, Lindsay, what were you saying? Oh, no, that's okay. I was interrupting you. Sorry. Is there a converter like to use over others because we used to use them at school but I just used to find like random ones but is there a QR code converter that is like your go-to what do you mean by QR converter like, like make to, make, to make it yeah I use I tend to use I have the word monkey in it QR code monkey that's the one I tend to use, right? No, 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 for no other particular reason and to, and let, and except for I know it works and it's simple. Like a lot of the other ones, like they have a whole bunch of stuff and I'm like, I don't need that. Like I just need you to get the, I just need to give you the link and I need to create QR code. Like I only have two steps and I like that about QR code monkey. Okay, thank you. And while we're there, the same thing when it comes to converting a PDF to an image. Like a lot of these things, I just look for a converter. It, Adobe and small PDF are definitely my go-tos. But like this is something you can all have your computer do for you. Like you don't need to be like a computer whiz to do them. And let's see if the network will allow me to do it. It might not. But yes, all you gotta do is put the PDF into it. Um, I'm gonna do like series tech excellence. Okay, okay, I'll do lenses. So all I have to do is just put the PDF in convert it to JPEG, and once it's done with this conversion, now I have an image file. And the same with vice versa. If you want an image to go to a PDF and vice versa, know sometimes that just like things get lost in translation or sometimes things can go a little bit wonky. The same thing when you're converting files from one type to another. Sometimes it doesn't always look that nice. So definitely preview your file before you send it off to where it needs to go into the world. What I've done when um, I've wanted to post a flyer or something that I can't, you know, um, that is like, a, for example, I posted a poem one time and, and I'm like, okay, well, I don't want to copy and paste because it's going to be too many words on Twitter. So what I've done is I've minimized it on my screen and then done the snip and clip or whatever that thing is, a snipping tool. And then I've <laughs> taken a photo of it and then put it in that way. That's so it's great. like a little different way of, mm -hmm. of doing the same. Nope, oh, that's great. No, nope, that's definitely a way to bypass word limits. Just take a bit, minimize it and take a picture of it. And now you can fit as many words as you'd like. Any questions that people may have at this time? Can we still not edit posts once they're posted? Let me put that. I don't know. I think I, know. I try every time I make a post. And then <laughs> I can't find it. Yeah, so it's still not an option. A I lot. think I remember Stacy when when I did a training with her, she said you couldn't. And so you just have to delete and repost yeah. it. So then I just copy and paste the the information so I don't have to rewrite everything. I just had to hope that once Elon Moss purchased it, he was going to add that feature because supposedly he was going to, but I guess he hasn't. But I think I heard that if you buy the pro. Oh, yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> that sucks. And things continue to evolve as they decide what do they want to make a free feature and what do they want to make a paid feature. 
But I think it is worthwhile, especially since it's relevant to your homework. I don't want you to feel like you have to do this on the computer. Is I want everyone to go to twitter.com and I actually do want you to sign into your that might be the hardest part of this is remembering your Twitter password if you don't always already remember it. I um, did mine with my Gmail password. So it's like <laughs> the, the only reason why I logged in. <laughs> So you can go ahead and go to twitter.com if you haven't or if you don't if you're not already signed in, signed in. And I just want you to practice doing making that signed in version into your into your phone. Well, your computer saves your password, doesn't it? Uh, if you marked it to save. Mm -hmm. uh, once you go into the web browser, the schedule thing is in there. Mm -hmm. Like even on your phone. And for that way, I can't say that it won't ever like make me like sign me out. But once I once I'm signed in into like the browser version and I saved it on my phone, whenever I open the link, like I'm already I already stay signed in. I don't have to sign in each time. Yes, it's a pro feature. Editing is a pro feature. Editing your posts. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Thank you. Free time. As long as we remember to actually copy before we like copy the post before we delete it. Because mm -hmm. it's happened many times where I have forgotten to do that and then I have to like retype everything again. Well, actually, wait. So I, how do you copy once I post? I can't copy, like I have to copy it before I post it. Is there a way to copy it after it's posted? You mean you can't highlight and highlight the information you just posted? No. After, oh, I can, I've done it before. Yeah, I think I've done it before too. Yeah, you should be able to. You like put your thumb, but it'll want to do, I think all of it. It'll like kind of copy all of it, not just like a word or something. Yeah, it can be really finicky, but you mm -hmm. should be able to do that one. It might take some playing around with. I can delete, pin to profile, add to highlights, change who can reply, and add and remove list when I like put my finger on it. But so you just, I think, have you re have you posted something recently? I thought you... Uh, sun uh, Saturday. Yes. So I want you to find that post. Okay. Click on it so that it becomes like full screen-ish. Oh, that was my issue. Okay. It, it should work the other way as well, but I find like it works way easier if it's like in my full screen mode. Oh, well, that's that's even great right there. <laughs> this is why we do these things. It's finding the little tips and tricks. To... And I was wrong. You can actually copy um copy bits of it versus yeah. You can you can yeah because like once you like yep. click on it or like put your thumb. Mm -hmm. It just does like the word that you're clicking on and then you can like select whatever you want to. But yeah, you have to be in the post like Kira said in order to do it. Right. Hmm. Well, that's a big help right there. Questions for me. Awesome class, Kira. <laughs> That's why we do this. Like, I like when, you know, we, yes, we're learning about X, but just learning these other bits and pieces outside of X that can help make our life even better than it already is. Even but like the whole, scheduling thing. Yes. Even if it's not on the app, it's still like, oh, I can do this. <laughs> you can do that. Because sometimes, you know, people, you forget to tweet when you need to tweet. So just having it scheduled and getting it off your plate can be a very helpful tipping trick to have. Um, for the homework, it's really just scheduling free tweets, which you may not be able to do that on the app, but you definitely can do it on the computer version. And now you know that you can also go to twitter.com and access some of the web functions that may not be available on the app. And so for that, one thing I probably did not show 
that will be important to show you is like, how do you see all your schedule tweet so that, cause that's what you're gonna need to take a screenshot to send to me. Okay, so. So I'm going to share screen two. I'm going to disregard this. I'm going to go to post. We're going to do this. I'm going to schedule it to go out April 13. Confirm. Schedule. And so now when I go to post, if I click on this little schedule calendar thing, right here it says scheduled post. Oh, okay. That's how I can see all of them. I only got one. But so then take a screenshot of that and send it to you. Exactly. So just send a screenshot of that schedule. Yeah. I mean, one of them does say to tag you. Yeah. Schedule three post. Send me a message on X through the message thing, which is really no different than like sending it like me an email or doing like a message on iPhone. And then the third one is just launch a poll. Um, your poll can really be about whatever you want. If you want it to be about some social media planning days, like asking people, like, what are you most looking forward to? Like food, friend, I don't know. But it can be about whatever you want. Um, and then you can just mention me in it so that I'll get the notification that that part of the homework is done. I'm here to answer questions and wondering. But after that, I hope everyone has a good rest of their morning. Yeah, Thank, you. Well. Thank you. Thank you.